2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 12. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold the words of the prophets, declared good to the king, with one that sent. That's the only time that word shows up, it's sent. They're positive, loving preachers. They're good preachers. Let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. They want unity with false preaching. Let's all get together. There are some churches where they have uh, already prescribed sermons for the week that's coming. There are some churches where the preachers already given a prescribed script that will be said on Sunday. You will say the same thing that all the other preachers in the congregation of our institute will, will do. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, that's an oath, the ever being, the everlasting God, even what my God saith, that I will speak. What God tells me to speak, I'm going to speak it. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto Micaiah, Shall we go to Raven Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? And he said, Go up, go ye up, and prosper, prosper, prosper. That's the positive message. And they shall be delivered into thy hand. Micaiah knew exactly what those preachers preached. He had the idea, he knew what the substance of their messages were. Prosper. You should win. Great glory to you. Then he said, would be the king, I, wait a minute. And the king said to him, how many times shall I adjure thee? That means the charge to command by oath. That thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord. Well, evidently, I guess Micaiah is a kind of man that would be sarcasm. Well, you want me? Everything's going to be good, king. <laughs> now, he says, you're going to speak the truth to me. Look what he says in verse 7. The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, that there is one man by whom we may acquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. So, Micaiah and Ahab have had dealings before. And the king has said to Micaiah, you speak the truth, nothing to, to me but the truth. So when Micaiah comes in there and says what his prophets say, what he wanted him to say, he's like, you're a liar. And there are some men out there who preach the truth, and if you were to give in, if you were to cave into what the world preaches, they would recognize you as a fraud right away. It's when they don't recognize you're frauding that you're in trouble. And he said, Micaiah, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. That's kind of interesting. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. We're going to look at some scriptures today. Mark 6, 34. In Mark 6, 4, and Jesus, we know who he is, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were all as sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. 
You know what sheep are without a shepherd? Confused. Outlost. Injured with no help. A sheep is defenseless. A sheep can't even clean its own fur or wool, whatever you call it. He needs a shepherd. A shepherd's job is to guide the sheep, lead the sheep, heal the sheep, clean the sheep. Jesus says, I am the, I'm the shepherd of the sheep. And the Lord said, these have no master. Ahab. God doesn't even recognize the authority of Ahab as the, as the king. You're doing nothing for this sheep. There are pastors in the ministry today, they don't care about the sheep. They don't love the sheep. They don't take care of the sheep. That's a sorry thing. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. Don't go to war. That's the answer. When he said, shall I go to Raymond Gilead? And he says, don't go. That's the answer. And he closes. Let every man return in peace. Don't go to war. That's the answer. You don't have a man that's going to lead you into battle. Don't go. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil. Evidently, the king Ahab wants to go into battle. And Ahab was rebuked by, you're not a shepherd, you're not a shepherd to lead them. Tell the men to go home. In peace, no war. And he said, be my K.I., Every, every preacher's got to preach at least once on make, make AI, uh, my KI. Therefore, hear the word of God. Uh, Lord, excuse me. Hear the word of the Lord. He's not finished. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. Kind of interesting, the Bible says God's the spirit. My K.I. saw God on the throne. And the host of heaven, angels. So he gets the same kind of vision that John gets. That Stephen saw before his death. With Jesus standing. With Moses and Aaron and them going up to the mountain at one point. They said they saw God in the pavement. And the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. So around God in heaven, there's a host around him. Could be even the beast. Like Ezekiel and John. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall in Ramoth Gilead? Paul, that's not good. Paul's destruction causes injury, causes harm. And one spank saying after this manner, and another saying after this, that manner. Doesn't say what they said. God speaks from the throne. All right, who's going to make Ahab fall? And there's beings that said something. They said, this one said, that one said, and it's not recorded what they said. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. He says, I see God sitting on his throne. There are hosts around God. And I saw this one spirit walk up to God himself. He says it's a spirit. Evidently, you can see spirits. He said, I will entice him. 
And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Let's stop right there for a moment. God said, all right, I want Ahab to fall in battle. I need somebody here who's going to help me make him fall. Now, isn't that odd? The determination, the product that God wants is for a wicked king to fall. And he looks to heaven. He said, all right, who's going to help me do it? And there are voices or some kind of manner of speaking here and there do no avail. And this one spirit walks up to God and says, I'll do it. And God says, the all-knowing God, he wants a confession. He said, I'll do it. I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. Second Corinthians 11, 14. This would not be preached in a modern church today. And we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 13. So 15 is our main charge. If this was read in your modern church today, it would cause some suspicion. Probably change in modern Bible. Verse 13, for such are false apostles. And there are churches out there that call themselves the apostolic church. There are churches out there that says we follow the op apostolic succession. In other words, we can trace our lane of hands back to Peter, James, John, Paul, or whoever. We are apostles. We have the power of healing. We have the power that the apostles have. You don't. There is no power to the apostles today. False apostles. False. Deceitful workers. That's not good. Those are classifications of used car salesmen or politicians. Would you hire a deceitful worker to come to do business for you? And yet they are in verse 13, 14, 15. Those false prophets that spoke to Ahab are deceitful workers. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and they're not. And no marvel. There's no need to be, oh, oh man, what is this doctrine? Don't go into, ooh, ah. For Satan himself is transformed. Transformers, change before your eyes. They're not what they appear to be. into an angel of light are not angels of spirit the book of hebrews say i've seen the light i died and saw the light you might have seen satan got that right there satan angel of light Bear be careful of your light visions maybe satanic but we're not finished verse 15. here's our context therefore it is no great thing if his minister run to his back to who? Satan, verse 14. <clears throat> Satan has ministered. Not every man and woman in the pulpit is an ambassador of God. It can be of Satan. Also be transformed as ministers of righteousness who then shall be according to their works. So here is Satan transformed as something that he's not. And he has ministers. John 8, 44. Now we know who Satan is. He's the devil. 
He's no good. He is accuser of the brethren. He's a dragon. He hates Israel. John 8, 44. In the words of Jesus Christ himself. Again, we're looking at the words of Jesus Christ. Ye are your father the devil. That's Satan. God's a father and the devil's a father. And the lust of your father ye will do. He's lustful. Pornography, alcohol, tobacco, sex, sin is the lust of the devil. And Paul describes lust as coveting. So coveting things that you don't have, you want, is of the devil. He was a murderer in the beginning. We're not dealing with that. Abode not in the truth. Here we go. Because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, there we go. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So here is the spirit. Might be bright spirit. Might be full of light. He walks up the guy and says, I'll take that challenge. I'm great at making people fall. Is God out to make people fall? God's not willing that any should perish. There is a spirit that has his own ministers that will lie to you that are false and follow liar. And their father is a liar. And he appears before God and he says, I'll send lying ministers to you. Job 1. Job chapter 1. Job 1, verse 6. Ahab wanted a lie. And God says, I need someone to send them that lie. You know, a sorry state of God to a lost man, he will give you the religion that you want and to be damned by. And yet he will send one man with the truth. You cannot say Ahab never heard. Micaiah told him the truth. And we're going to read later on, Lord willing, that Ahab will die. Micaiah told him, don't go to battle. Now there was a day when the sons of God, verse 6, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. There's the throne room of God. There's the angel standing before God. And here comes Satan standing before God. Does that sound familiar? And the Lord said unto Satan, does that not look familiar? I'm looking for someone to... Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. Does that recognize our, our what we're reading in Chronicles? The Spirit said to God, From going to and fro through the earth and walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright one, that feareth God and sheweth evil? Satan answered the Lord and said, Does, does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not has not thou made a hedge about him? And about his house and about all he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hand and his substance increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has in thy power, only upon himself put not thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and did everything that God allowed him to do. The devil sought permission from God. Same thing, chapter 2, verse 2. 
The Lord said unto Satan, well, whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord. He said, from going to and through. Same thing. Verse 3, the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant, Job? Verse 4, Satan answered the Lord and said, said uh, Answer the Lord and said, Skin for skin, all that a man hath, he will give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch him. Touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So went Satan from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boiled from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Back to Second Chronicles. I will send a lying spirit. Where do we read about that liar? That's the devil. John 8, 44. In the mouth of his prophets, where did we see that? Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 11, 14 and 15. What's the message? Chapter 18, verse 5. Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into thy hand. Chapter, I mean, verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, with these thou shalt push the Syrians until thou be consumed. Verse 11, go up to Rimagilia and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into thy hand of the king. Those are the lying men that the devil sent. What's that today? Just let your love show and God will be so pleased with you. Get in our water, join our church, jump through hooves, give out magazines. Do whatever it is that we tell you to do and God will be pleased with you. And when you get somebody knocking on your door, you get somebody preaching on the street, you get a co-worker hand you a piece of paper, you get somebody that shows you an open Bible that what God said, that only by Jesus Christ are you able to be saved. And you tell God, nah, I don't want Jesus. I wish he'd shut up. I wish he'd leave me alone. And God will get to the point, okay, fine. What do you want? And your heart says, this is what I want. I'll give it to you. You want a lion preacher? Devil be more than happy to give you. Why is there so much religion? Satan's willing to give it to you, and man is willing to believe it. Right there. God said Ahab's going to fall. Who's going to do it? The devil steps up. I've got to teach Job a lesson. Who's willing to do it? Hi, God, it's me, Satan. I'll do it. Look at Deuteronomy 13, 3. Deuteronomy 13, 3. This will definitely not be brought inside churches today. Imagine a, a preacher getting up and saying, God's the one that caused us to fall. Using Satan. They don't even believe in Satan. Deuteronomy 13, 3. Watch the message. Thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet. He wants you to go after strange gods, verse 2. Or that dreamer of dreams. That's kind of interesting in American history. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. God may send a man in front of you or a woman in front of you to say, all right, who do you love? Do you love the truth or do you love the lie? Now, who's of the lie? John 8, 44, the devil. Who's the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. Salvation, what do you want? Do you want a lie? Satan's got him. Or do you want the truth? Jesus Christ, there it is. And God will allow the devil to go out and deceive people because that's what they want. But God will send one man to go out and tell you the truth. Verse, 20, uh, verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the, uh, this prophet. The Bible says God's not able, God cannot and will not, and is not capable of ever telling a lie. That's not God. There is a lying spirit out there. Look at that verse. 
Whether you call it a Baptist story, it's called a lie. White lie, red lie, green lie, a little happy lie. It's a lie. It comes from Satan, John 8, 44. And we all do it. In the mouth of his prophets, those are preachers. Those are reverends. Those are rabbis. Those are pastors. Whatever your church denomination calls it, there it is. And 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15 says they're from the devil. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now watch. Now therefore, this is not going to be brought in a school, in a, any school, any Bible, lacking church. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. I thought that lion spirit did it. I thought Satan did. God allowed Satan to do it. And that is exactly what Ahab wanted. God only answered the prayer of Ahab. Ahab's like, oh, please let me go to battle. Oh, please let me go to battle. Uh, you're not the proper shepherd of those sheep. Sheep, go home in peace. Oh, that's not, oh, that's not, he hates me. Oh, go take these iron horns, and thou shalt be great, and thou, thou shalt be great. I'll listen to you. Okay, it's your fault, Ahab. You were warned by God. Now, now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against thee. What's the evil? He's going to die. Why? Because he didn't listen to God. He listened to liars instead of God. Then Zedekiah, the son of Kaniah, he's the one that made those uh, iron uh, horns, verse 10, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek. You got some nerve. And said, which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? He's denying the Holy Spirit presence in Micaiah. He's challenging Micaiah. How dare you speak against me? I'm the great false prophet of Ahab. How dare you go against me? Bam, right across the face. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go to an inner chamber to hide thyself. He's going to go into a fallout center. He's going to go to a bomb center. When the heat is on, <clears throat> Micaiah is going to run and hide. Great God. You know what this false prophet is going to do for you when you're being judged by God? And the axe falls, they're going to be trembling. They're going to be in fear for their own selves. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah, and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison. For what? Preaching the truth. Telling the truth. And feed him with bread of affliction. That's not very good bread. Probably the most untastiest bread. Probably has mold. Probably not much of it either. And water. And with water affliction. Probably dirty water. Water by weight. Until I come, until I return in peace. In verse 16, Micaiah told the people, go home in peace. The king said, I will come back after battle in peace. The king heard what Micaiah said. 
Watch Mikai give him one more chance. And Mikai said, If thou certainly return in peace, verse 16, then has not the Lord spoken by me. Verse 16, and he said, Hearken, all ye people. The message is verse 16, you ain't no leader. Go home, be in peace. Do not go to battle. And king, if you come back home, then I'm a liar. The king does not come back home. He dies in the battlefield. I'll tell you. Lord willing, we'll do this next night. And yet, it's never recorded what happened to make AI. Look at the order at verse in the 26. Until I return in peace. He doesn't return in peace. He returns dead. It looks like Mekai could have spent his entire life in jail if they followed the king's order. The man spoke the word of God and he got persecuted. He spoke the truth and he wasn't listened to. He spoke what God told him to speak and he ended up in jail. And all the false prophets and all the, the, the religions spoke to Ahab and they were listened to. They were honored. They were praised. And they got their church member dead and in hell. And when he's dead, we'll get with the, 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 the dying and the war in the next verses of this, finish this chapter out. Religion will get you dead. And it will get you in hell. The word of God will get you alive. Listen, those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you die, okay? Yes. You may die. Rapture may happen, but if you die, the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. You don't die in Christ. You go to be with Christ. You go, to, you go to paradise, you go to be with Jesus Christ far better. If you die without Jesus Christ, you die, you get buried, and you end up in hell. Whoever brought you there, whoever took you there, rest assured by the verses that we've done today, not every preacher in the pulpit, not every rabbi, not every priest, that stands up with a Bible is of God. They could be possibility of Satan, and Satan's the liar. And we just saw one man get deceived and angry at God. 